The plain is Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I loves me some black. And she said, loves me some black news. She says, is it just me or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? I'm your girl, the plainest Jane. And let's see what's happening in these virtual streets. You ready? All right now. <laughs> this will be a crazy ride. I'm warning you now. What up and welcome back. I'm Jane, the plainest Jane, and I provide syrup in the form of black news and celebrity uh, entertainment. Okay, get on the bus. Good morning. This was a very unexpected morning show, but I went to sleep early last night before I could give y'all what I wanted to give. So this isn't quite the show I was going to give you last night, but there is a story or two that is in here that I did want to talk about. So come on in, get on the bus. I know it's early. Okay, I know some of y'all are stuck on the toilet. Because y'all was busy trying to get them 50 cent nickel burgers from Burger King, Wendy's, McDonald's, wherever. I know some of y'all are on the toilet because y'all was trying to get them burgers. Not me, child. <laughs> it wasn't me. I do know somebody that tried to get a burger, but it was all this, oh, you got to order on the app or you got to purchase something else. And baby, you got to think to yourself, what is in these burgers that they was throwing them at y'all like mush back in the day? I don't know. I don't know what's in them burgers that they just. I, I don't really ever remember an almost free burger day. Well, yesterday was basically like five cent to fifty cent burger day. I don't really remember that, but y'all have fun, child. I know some of y'all on the toilet right now. But wake up, good morning, happy Tuesday. Hopefully your week is going amazing. We got some stories that we need to get into, updates on some stories. There's so much going on right now that I haven't been able to touch on all of the stories, but we're going to get into some things now. I'm going to go to work. And then when I get off work, we got most stuff to get into. So I'm on the roll as of late. Y'all know things are always sticky in Hollywood and in real life. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Throw your pancakes in the chat. Hit thumbs up. Share this video with somebody that's getting ready for their morning routine. And let me know how y'all how y'all are enjoying the morning show, okay? Y'all know I don't typically do morning shows because I'm not an early riser, but I was up late last night because I got a lot of extra sleep. So I decided to do something with my time since I I, I couldn't go to sleep, okay? So, um, so <laughs> why I start looking around like you watching me? Yeah, because I know you in the attic because I know you are in that bathroom based on them burgers. That's why. <laughs> I know that some of y'all are in them bathrooms because y'all was rushing to get them little five cent, 50 cent burgers. Not me. Not me. <laughs> but since most of y'all are in the bathroom based on the burgers, it's okay. Wrap it up. You got to get ready to get into these people's job or get your mind right for the day in general. Let's get into this. Grab your panties. Check your panties. About 175,000 rice. I think that was supposed to be pantries. <laughs> I couldn't warn you before I saw it, and I couldn't warn you, Eric. I'm just so. About 175,000 rice and slow cookers are being recalled due to fire and electric shock hazards. Roll us on your wrist of plain giant. <laughs> Baby, not check your panties. Check your panties. Okay, because I know some of y'all you know, wipe correctly. Okay, if not, you could you look whatever you need to check. Whether you need to check your pantry, whether you need to check your panties, baby, check whatever it is. I recommend you check them both. Shoot, check them both. <laughs> that man said that with so much confidence, it came from it. Check your panties. I'm like, oh my goodness. I actually checked my panties when I saw this clip. I'm like, he knows something. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> What's going on? Whatever it is that you need to check, check it. And and the and child, now my eye really watering, laughing at this man here. 
Lord have mercy. Whatever it is that you need to check, baby, wake on up. Check them panties, change them and wash what you need to wash. Men, don't think that you are exempt from this. Check your boxes, check your briefs, check whatever you need to check, okay? And get your day going, okay? <laughs> we are going to get ready to pull off and get right into it. Like I said, I just wanted to give y'all some things to tune in on and just give you a dose of, of, of kind of what my personality is like in the morning because I'm always kind of spent later on. But listen, grab and check what you need to check. Hit thumbs up. Have a seat on the bus. Shout out to everybody in the live chat. Shout out to my moderators, my channel members, subscribers. And if you haven't hit subscribe yet because you're just kind of unsure, shout out to you too. But let's go ahead and get ready for takeoff, okay? Autumn done popped in and popped out. In the morning, it's autumn the day gets going around noon or so, then it kind of feels like summer again. So the weather is definitely trying to break right now. And let me know y'all experience with that. Um, if you kind of have felt some autumn weather going on, but let's get ready to take this bus off and get ready for our amazing and productive and prosperous Tuesday. Let's go. The following video is broadcasting live and thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. Okay, so let's jump into this story that really kind of had me <laughs> um, baffled, although I can't say I'm surprised at this story and how it's turning out because something just didn't seem right from the beginning. And to be quite frank, um, to be completely frank with you, it seemed as though law enforcement and maybe even surrounding families, um, they suspected foul play when it came to this story. So put a one in the chat. Um, put a one in the chat if you heard about this story of this missing black man, okay? This missing um, former NFL player. He and his mom went missing at the same time, right? And so the rest of the family, after 72 hours, they filed a missing persons report. Um, a lot of things are really shaky about this situation. I see some ones in the chat. It, it's, it's really strange what's going on here. Now, since both of them had been declared missing, the mom was unfortunately found unalive, um, not too far behind her home in a creek, Okay. And so the brother and other family members are begging for Sergio. His name is Sergio Brown. They're begging for him to come home and help them piece together exactly what happened with his mother. It's really strange that not only were the both of them missing at one time, one of them pops up missing. And then there's an update on the story. As you can see from the title, he's been found, sort of. Right. Um, and his behavior, I do find to be a, a, a bit strange and not in line with a grieving child. Right. Um, when it comes to grieving your parent. So his brother and other family members are begging for him to come home and help them piece together what happened. They both went missing together. And like I said, foul play is suspected. Let's get into this missing persons uh, poster. Just so that y'all know it's real. It wasn't just something that the internet made up. Um, I guess you could call this a Kelly Price situation, baby chat. I don't know. But this is his legitimate missing persons poster. So this is something that a lot of people were concerned of for one of two things. Foul play is suspected, right? Um, and a lot of people were thinking, well, is there a serial unaliver on the loose? Is he going to be next to pop up unalive? Or when you talk to the neighbors and the close family that live in the vicinity of of of, of these of him and his mom, they say he kind of just hasn't been in his right mind lately. Um, he was seen taking out the trash and burning all of his mother's clothes, and that was the last time that they saw him. This all captured on a close neighbor's doorbell ring camera. So there's some really eerie things going on to this. And I really want to peel back some of these, uh, the, the layers of the onion. So we're going to get into the Brothers Heartfelt post on Facebook in a second. But first, I want to show you some of these news clips just so that you can get a better grasp or an understanding for exactly what is going on here. Okay. And then Sergio has actually spoken out. So like I said, has he been found? 
yes, kind of, sort of, technically a little bit, but he also has some interesting things to say about his suspicions and theories about why things have turned out this way. So thank y'all for supporting the stream in any way possible. Let's get into these news clips. Please make sure you hit thumbs up on the video. It's free, right? You don't have to donate to the Cash App. Anything you do to support the stream, thumbs up, subscribe is very greatly appreciated. Okay, so let's get into this. News at 10 o'clock out of Maywood. A search for two missing people has now turned into a homicide investigation for one of them. Family members called police for help when they couldn't get in contact with 73 year old Myrtle Brown or her son, former NFL player, 35 year old Sergio Brown, earlier today. Investigating officers discovered Myrtle Brown's body near a creek behind her home in the western suburb. Her son, Sergio, is still missing. Detective are asking anyone with information on this case to call Maywood. Her family came and knocked on the door and was looking for her because they uh, put out a police report because she was missing for 72 hours. Like I said, uh, I would have never expected this in a million years. For a former NFL player, Sergio Brown, who loved ones say they have not heard from. Now, earlier today, we talked to Sheila Simmons, who is the sister of Myrtle Simmons Brown, and she told us that she last talked to Myrtle on Thursday. She says early this morning, around 3 a.m., she got a call that Myrtle and her nephew, former NFL player Sergio Brown, were missing. Sheila says she came to her sister and nephew's house in Maywood and noticed things around the house were out of the ordinary. Sheila says she and police searched the creek behind the house and initially didn't find anything. But later in the day, she and family members went back to search and discovered her sister's body in the creek. But we're going to find out what happened because it's, un uh, it's not unnormal for my sister to just not answer her phone, don't respond to text messages. People been reaching out to her since Friday. No one was able to reach her. And now I got the call, like I said, this morning saying that she's missing. Mm -hmm. So immediately I came out here mm -hmm. and now I find out that my sister's dead. And of course, this family is devastated. When we last talked to them, they say they had not heard from Sergio. Loved ones also say that Myrtle had just celebrated her 73rd birthday recently on September the 8th. As more details in this investigation become available, we'll bring them to you. Reporting live tonight in Melrose Park, I'm Jewel Hillary, WGN News. Hey, so this is very strange. And as I stated previously, uh, foul play has been suspected here, right? Not to rush to judgment because who wants to, you know, rush to blame a black man? Especially, again, we have to keep in mind, <clears throat> and I'm not making excuses. I'm not. However, karma, I will say that sometimes you have to remember with a lot of these, these black athletes, CTE and that constant trauma, body trauma, head trauma, whatever trauma to the head, they be having some issues. And I, I really feel like things need to be rearranged in the NFL and in a lot of these sports, right? Because it's not just football, right? It's even basketball. It's hard on the knees. It's hard in the leg. Tell Mike Tyson, we know he had his head knocked up so many times. I, I'm surprised he's kind of simmered down over the years. But, you know, the CTE and the constant beating up in the head, when you are signing these contracts to play these sports so that everybody else can watch you destroy your body at a faster rate than we are sitting down watching it, there needs to be some sort of lifetime health care for the rest of your life. Even if they take one or two million out of your salary to give you health care for the rest of your life. And I'm not just talking head injuries, knees injuries now. I will say this. I don't think that that is a, 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 an excuse, a contributing factor maybe, but not an excuse if what we're all thinking, especially knowing that he, you know what I need to do? I need to pull up the article from NBC because that's what really has the, the um, that's what really has the, the details that really point to him as a suspect, seriously. Um, it's actually quite eerie. It's quite, quite, quite eerie. Um, and how the family feels about it. Because it it outlines exactly what was going on in the days leading up to 
um, in the, oh, I'm sorry, in the days following, in the last time he was seen alive, okay? So let's get into this. Okay. So authorities searched on Monday for him and his 73-year-old mother and her body was found near a creek behind their suburban Chicago home. Relatives told officers that they couldn't find Sergio Brown either. He's 35 years old. Um, they found his mom's body um, and a medical examiner determined on Sunday that she had been injured during an assault. Now, um, don't care where he went to school. Don't care about all of that. Give me a second. This is the article because it really outlines some, some chilling, chilling facts about this case. It really does. So, okay. She was found unresponsive near a creek behind her home as officers searched for her and her son, who formerly played for the Buffalo Bills. The medical examiner's office said by email Sunday night that she was unalived by, quote, multiple injuries due to assault, end quote. Family members who said they couldn't find or contact the two reported them missing on Saturday. And officers launched a search, but it wasn't until the second round that his mother was found in the creek. Now, the statement characterized the police probe as a homicide investigation without saying what led detectives to said determination. And currently, the police department is attempting to locate Sergio Brown. All right. Now, he played in 2016. No, mm -mm, no. Where's the article I had earlier that had the neighbor actually, actually outlining? Mm -mm, no, I need the other article. Oh, because it wasn't NBC. It was it was CBS. Got you, y'all. We are live right now. All right. This is the article that I need that I read on my phone. All right. Okay, turn that alarm off. Don't nobody want it's too early. Car alarm going off early in the morning like this. All right, so, nah, for real, turn that alarm off. Okay, so, okay, here we go. Police lights and crime scene tape are unfamiliar sites for the residents. The whole block was filled with police. Now, Cortez was present and curious about what was happening in his neighborhood. He learned earlier the concern was surrounding his neighbor who was 73 years old and her son. We already heard that quote. We already got into that. This is his mother. She was such a beautiful lady. Okay. So Maywood police found her. Okay. We already got there. So on Sunday, they identified the cause of death. Timeline in person. Okay. So here we go. The neighbor says his mother was an outstanding woman. And I'm hoping she's in the right place. And with God, like I said, I would have never expected this in a million years. You only watch this on TV. And to know this happened next door is a tragedy. While police continue searching for Sergio, neighbors are assisting with a timeline. And this neighbor tells CBS2 that he last saw the two on Thursday in person. And on his ring doorbell, he saw something else. He says, quote, they seen him taking out the trash and they seen him have a bonfire where he burned all of her clothes. Now, if that doesn't seem strange, that's strange. That's strange. Very strange. Okay. And so they said, now this, this is another thing that led me to believe, what if he snapped? What if he had some type of mental or psychotic break? And, and this is what happened. And again, CTE or any of the injuries he, you know, incurred while he was in the NFL could have possibly led to that, but he's still going to need to be held accountable for this if he's guilty, right? So the neighbor goes on to say he wasn't himself the last few months. He was out of his mind. He adds, while police have been called to the home before, he hopes Saturday was the final time he'll see police lights and crime scene tape. The neighbor continues and says, I just hope that the family has closure and I'll be praying for them. I hope the family gets through this and I'll keep them in my mind and 
prayers. So, like I said, the brother did release a statement on Facebook, which is what this article is talking about now. And we're going to read that in just a second. So the police department is asking anyone with information on Sergio Brown's whereabouts to contact the police department or local law enforcement. And tipsters can also remain anonymous by calling 708-450-1787. So if this ain't strange, baby, I don't know what is. Who wants to rush to judgment with the, when we really just don't have all of the facts? But something doesn't seem right here. But like I said, he's spoken out since then, and we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that in just a second. Let's get into now what the brother had to say on Facebook. All right. And thank you all for supporting the stream. It's early this morning. Shout out to the people on Facebook. I see there's a couple people watching on Facebook. I'm trying to do better with spreading myself out to other platforms instead of being reliant on YouTube. So if you don't follow my Facebook page, please make sure you do. You might get different or better notifications and alerts. Let's get into what his brother had to say, right? So his brother says, thank you to everyone for your outreach, help, love, and condolences. It's a sad, but a hopeful time. And we will get through this together. Mom always told me tough times don't last. And our last conversation about tough times being temporary is my beacon of hope. Mom, I thank you for being strong, caring, diligent, fancy, funny, and for saving my art. I won't let you down. My brother Sergio is still missing. If anyone knows where he is, I want him to know that I love you and please come home. People, please don't approach the property. This is still an ongoing investigation by the police department. If you have any information on Sergio's whereabouts, please send them to the police department. And then there are several images of his mom. Okay. So this is, this is, uh, this is pretty, it's pretty intense. It's pretty eerie. And I think it goes without saying that it is suspicious, right? It's very suspicious. Now to keep this story, um, to keep it pushing without taking too long to get through this story, there has been an update and Sergio has been, I wouldn't, I would, you know what? I wouldn't even say he was found. I would say he's been spotted, right? Sort of. And you know what? Let me play the clip first before I kind of share where how how I interpret it. Let's go ahead and let you listen to what he said. Pay attention to his surroundings. Pay attention to the music in the background. But at this point, all of y'all have read the title. He is in Mexico. Okay. Fake news. Fake news. It has to be the... FBI, they came into my house on Bob Marley's death day, which is 511 Agent Gas, unwarranted. So he's blaming the FBI outright. It seems as though he's in defense mode as opposed to being in more of a grieving mode. You know what I mean? It's fake news. It's fake news. The FBI did it. But let's keep listening. They kidnapped me twice from home, the Maywood Police Department, right? Chris Fuqua did it twice. Aaron Pepper was there the second time that it happened. It had to be the FBI or the Maywood Police. I thought my mom was on vacation in Sinaloa. Fake news. Damn fake. She retired. You want to come to me? The Maywood Police got to give me money. FBI had to do it. They got the power to do it like that. What's going on? That's fake news. Child, let's listen to that one more time because he was saying a lot. Let's unpack it again. No. And do me a favor. As you listen to whatever may sound off or may be a red flag to you outside of the obvious red flag in the background here, there's literally a green flag and a red flag. What sounds suspicious to you? What are you What are you drawing from this? Okay. Fake news. Fake news. It has to be the... FBI, they came into my house on Bob Marley's death day, which is 511 Agent Gas, unwarranted. They kidnapped me twice from home, the Maywood Police Department, right? Chris Fuqua did it twice. Aaron Pepper was there the second time that it happened. It had to be the FBI or the Maywood Police. I thought my mom was on vacation in Sinaloa. Fake news. 
If you want to come to me, yeah. the Maywood police got to give me money. FBI had to do it. They got the power to do like that. What's going on? That's fake news. Don't with me. Fake news. Fake news. Fake news. It has to be the FBI. They came into my house on Bob Marley's death day with the 511 agent gas unwarranted. Bob Marley's death day and Asian gas. I don't understand how any of this correlates when if you, did you find out by the news that your mom was deceased? Because if you didn't do it, then you found out by the news because you didn't flee, flee to Mexico. So they didn't kidnap you twice. Chani gas and fake news and the FBI did it. I don't know if he is crazy or if he's playing crazy or if, I, I, I don't know, but something is definitely off here. Kidnap me twice from home, the Maywood Police Department, right? Chris Fuqua did it twice. Aaron Pepper was there the second time that it happened. It had to be the FBI or the Maywood Police. I thought my mom was on vacation in Sinaloa. Fake news. She retired. If you want to come to me, the Maywood Police got to give me money. FBI had to do it. They got the power to do it like that. What's going on? That's fake news. Okay, so he's in Mexico, child. Um, he did a post. He did several. He did a few posts, posts and deletes um, on his page. Okay. Let me go ahead and show you the post and delete that he did where he actually, he actually tagged his location, but he quickly deleted that one. He quickly deleted that one. You know how you can go on Instagram on your Instagram stories and type in um and and have the thing pop up that actually shows your location. Well, he slipped up and he did that. Not that we couldn't kind of tell based on his surroundings and, and the music that that's not where he was, but um here it is. Screenshot Mexico City, Mexico. Okay. So why would you flee to Mexico? Why don't you seem mm, even the slightest bit of empathetic? You thought you, he said in this video, in this clip here, you kind of need to slow it down and hear all he says, even though it doesn't make sense. You just found out through the news and the media that your mom is no longer with us and you're ranting about fake news and Chinese gas and kidnapping and the FBI and money and it's, it's giving guilty, it's giving legitimate crazy or playing crazy in order to get a lesser plea. Most importantly, why did you flee to Mexico? Why was that necessary? We don't know. We don't know. And he has no care in the world to what get back, to, to make funeral arrangements. You're not sad. You're out at a bar. It's clear his words were slurring a little bit. So he is slightly inebriated. You could tell by the background, he's at a bar enjoying beverages, right? Um, very strange, very strange. And, and again, I bangs with Bob Marley because me and Bob Marley have the same birthday, but Bob Marley's death date in the midst of your mom actually being someone who just experienced death, I don't think has any relevancy here, but he's just stringing all types of stuff together. And it just, it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense. So, um, like I said, his theory is interesting. He finds out his mother passed away on the news and he's like, well, the FBI did it. Okay. Um, okay. Is he even that high, high, that much of a high profile player that they would target? What, like what, what is it that he has or that he knows that would make him a target? But nonetheless, do y'all think that CTE or any of the trauma to his head or his brain may have something to do with it? Um, I know that that is a part of this discussion. I don't think that it's an excuse for anything that he's done at all. He still needs to be held accountable, whether that was a contributing factor or not. But I'm curious to know what you all think about it and um, and where you all land with it. I pass the question off to you, Sticky. So you think he's mentally ill? Um, do you think he deserves a padded cell or a show enough jail? And, or maybe jail and medications. If you think he did it, right? Because, I mean, we're spec it, it seems weird to us, right? Um, but what are your thoughts? Do you think he did it? Do you think he didn't do it? 
Do you think he's out of his mind that he did it and maybe he doesn't remember, right? There's so much to speculate here, but he is definitely a suspect in foul play is suspected in this scenario. So um, that is that. Th those, those are some of my final thoughts and unanswered questions. Um, I've shared mine. I would love to hear y'all's down below in the live chat. Or if you're chasing the bus, let me know down below in the hard comments. Okay. Now, real quick, I hope y'all are feeling all right. Y'all know uh, mental health is big to me. So I hope that y'all have already taken care of your mental health and invisible problems, especially because it's early in the morning. I know I got a couple of new subscribers. I just want to say thank y'all. And before I continue breaking down some of these stories with the last couple of minutes that we have, make sure you subscribe, okay? And thumbs up or down, either way, I appreciate it. And don't forget to think critically and independently, regardless of what you hear from me or anybody else, okay? So we're going to continue with this Black news and getting into these stories and topics today. Now, let's go ahead and head on over to Los Angeles. Now, this is really a story that needs to be amplified. We're talking about Black people. We're talking about black women and we're talking about things that really just aren't aren't covered in the news media as much. And, and it seems like they're being mm, sweeped under the rug, for lack of better words. OK, so let's get into this next story. Thank you all for hitting thumbs up on the video if you haven't already and dropping some pancakes. Let's move on to the next day. The plane is Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I love me some black. And she said, loves me some <laughs> black news. She says, is it just me or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? Now, as I stated earlier, this story comes straight out of L.A. And this story is about two black models who have been found. OK, there we go. Two black models have been found dead in their downtown Los Angeles apartments in the last week. What's really eerie and coincidental about this situation is they both lived in the same neighborhood, literally within blocks of one another. And both of these things happened within two days of one another. So there are two different ongoing investigations, but we we have more questions than answers pertaining to this situation. So I want to get into all of the details that I have, and then we're going to get into this news clip. So authorities are, let me put their stories, God rest their souls. And they were literally 31 and 32 years old. So people are wondering, are these things connected or not? And what's really interesting is one is actually being investigated for um, as as a as a as a murder, right? As a redrum, <laughs> um, and one is being investigated as a regular, just a regular passing. It just doesn't make sense. All right. So authorities are investigating after two models were found unalive in their downtown Los Angeles apartments, less than a mile away from each other, just two days apart. On September the 12th, authorities found 31-year-old Melissa Mooney deleted, right, unalived, in her apartment located in the 200 block of Figura Street in downtown Los Angeles. Now, according to the LAPD, Mooney was K-I-L-L'd inside of her apartment, and her cause of unaliving remains under investigation. It is, um, it is being investigated as a red drum, right? You, you know, you got to use certain words on YouTube. So just two days before that, on September 10th, the body of 32-year-old Nicole Coates was found inside of her apartment in the 700th block of Grand Avenue, okay? Officers had responded to her home to perform a welfare check around 10 a.m., but no one responded. Around two hours later, someone called to report a lifeless body at the home, and her cause of death still remains under investigation. But hers is not being investigated as an unaliving or a red rum at this time, which is very strange because in an interview with Nicole's aunt, she stated how she couldn't even recognize her when discussing the way her niece looked when family members discovered her lifeless body inside of her apartment. Her aunt also continued on and said, I believe it was M-U-R-D-E-R, -E 
I really do. One of her legs was up in the air in a kicking position. That's not somebody who just laid in their bed and died, end quote. Now, also, Nicole Coates, her mother told the news station that the scene of her daughter's death was bloody and gruesome. Now, despite what her family claims about the state of her body and the crime scene, the LAPD is not investigating her demise as a red rum, right? Now, currently, there's no word on whether the incidents are for sure related as of now, but it's definitely an eerie coincidence. Let's get into these news clips. And I want to hear what you all think about this. Now at six, a second model has been found dead in her apartment in downtown LA. And this happened just days before another model was found dead in her nearby apartment. Tonight, we have the latest on both of those cases. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the News at 6. I'm Rick Chang. And I'm Kareen Winter. A deepening mystery tonight as we learn of the death of a model in downtown L.A., the second in a matter of days. Yeah, both of them found lifeless in their own apartments. Tonight, in a story you'll see only on five, the mother of one of those victims is speaking out. Let's go to Chris Wolf. He joins us live from Hollywood now. He's got details on all of this. Chris? That's right, Rick, Kareen, what a mystery this is. Two young models discovered dead in their luxury apartments in downtown Los Angeles just days apart. One case is considered a homicide. The other one right now is considered suspicious, undetermined. Are they related? This is a story you will see only on Five. It's, it's senseless and I want some answers because my daughter is gone. It is not fair. <laughs> I want everybody to find out who did this to her. <laughs> she, should, she shouldn't be gone. But we need to know. We need to know what happened. Family members of a beautiful young model who recently discovered her dead in her downtown Los Angeles apartment are crying foul play and explain they are frustrated at the lack of answers and information coming from investigators. 32-year-old Nicole Coates, known as Nikki, told friends she had a date on Friday, September 8th. That's the last they heard from her. She didn't answer calls or texts during the weekend, so her father and aunt visited her luxury apartment two days later, located at 8th and Grand. That's when they made the gut-wrenching discovery. I couldn't recognize her. You feel there was some level of violence with this death? Yes, I do. You believe it was murder? I believe it was. I really do. One of her legs was up in the air in a kicking position. That's not uh, nobody that's just laid in their bed and died. I don't know who she went out with. What transpired there, I have no idea. But I'm going to find out. So if you're out there, you're going to get caught. You're messing with the wrong person. The L.A. County Coroner's Office says the case of Nicole Coates is open and the cause of death deferred. That means the cause is undetermined and further investigation is needed. However, Nikki's suspicious death is alarmingly similar to another recent case. During a welfare check for concerned family members, police discovered the body of 31-year-old model and real estate agent Melissa Mooney on Tuesday afternoon. She was inside her luxury apartment, Sky at Bunker Hill on South Figueroa Street. The LAPD is not releasing any details, but confirms detectives are investigating the young woman's death as a homicide. Family and friends are devastated and neighbors are extremely concerned. The family of Nikki Coates is watching that case closely. I feel myself is a predator loose. Anyone with information should contact the LAPD. Roll us on your wrist of plain giant. Is that not eerie or is that not eerie? Right. Like this, it, it's way too coincidental. Some other details that I was reading as I was kind of doing my research and kind of cross comparing and cross examining, should I say, some of these facts that are coming from different places. Now, we know the L.A. Times is very accurate. OK, let's get into this here. 
The LA police officer said on Saturday night, because because again, it's just a matter of one, the family is describing a bloody and a gruesome crime scene, and that one's not being considered a blatant unaliving, but the other one is. And we want justice for both of these women. Make no mistake, these were two young, beautiful black women. 31 and 32 years old is way too early. However, it seems that I don't know if they're writing one off or not, but something just I don't know if they're taking one more serious than the other or maybe there's just something we're not seeing as civilians as to the lens and perspective of law enforcement. So um, an officer said that Saturday night that he had no idea about the circumstances of Nicole Coates death and says, quote, we had no information of any type of homicide or anything. We couldn't find anything on that. It could be anything. And so a lieutenant from the coroner's office confirmed the date and location of her unaliving and said it was under, quote, active investigation. But he added that the cause of death is deferred. So we don't have any cause of death to give you at this time, but it's subject to change. But at this time, they don't have anything that basically says that her life was taken from her. They're treating it like a regular passing. So this is extremely unfortunate, in my opinion, especially if, you know, when we hear how the family describes the placement of her body, what the crime scene looks like, how how gruesome it was. Um, it's strange to me. However, what I will say is this. There is a GoFundMe that you can donate. I haven't seen a GoFundMe for the other young lady. Um, I don't want to... I don't want to mispronounce her name. How is it? Miss Mo Miss Melissa Mooney. I don't have any GoFundMe information for her, but I do have GoFundMe information for the other woman. Her name is Nicole. Her family calls her Nikki. And this is the GoFundMe information for her. And you know what I'll do is I will place it for her name. Nicole Coates. And I've put... I've put that GoFundMe in the chat right now. So if you're watching the replay, I just put it in the in the chat. When I get to work, I'll either pin it to the top of the comments or add it to the description box. But this is a really unfortunate situation. So they've got 15, almost 16,000 thus far. But um, this is sad. You can hear the pain in these people's voices. Um, and it really sucks. It really, really, really sucks. And I want to know what you all think about it. Okay. I only have a couple minutes left. This is the morning show. I know that this is kind of dreary news, but sometimes the truth and what's really going on is something that we need to take in more so than prioritizing celebrity entertainment. I talk about celebrity entertainment a lot over here. I try to keep a good balance, but we talk about celebrity entertainment and these celebrities all day. And, and those celebrity lives in those world, it's not affecting everyday people like you and me. What's happening to these celebrities is not necessarily the stuff that we may encourage as, as everyday Black people. So I think it's important to amplify the voices, the stories, the misfortunes, and to keep the conversation going about the misfortune that happens with everyday Black people like you and me, like these folks. Um, because if we don't have our back, who do we have? Who do we have? So I had to cover these real topics this morning, but that's why we opened up the show with, with the jokes and the laughs. Um, but th these are things we need to talk about. We can't avoid black news um, and real life stories because we just don't want to hear it. Right. I understand it's a balance about it. I can't stay in a depressive mode all day, like reading like 28 horrible gut wrenching stories all day, but it, it's definitely about a balance. So this is balanced over here. Tonight will be more entertainment based when I get off of work. Um, mm -mm -mm. The, these are some heartbreaking stories that we are talking about and covering over here. Okay. Another thing that we need to give back to y'all know things always sticky in Hollywood and in real life. So let's get into this next story. And don't forget, like I said, don't forget to check into your mental health in the meantime and in between time. If it becomes too much, click away and make sure your mind is okay. Mind your mental peace. I say this all the time. Okay. Let's get into this next story because I only got about 20 or so minutes to talk about this with y'all. I, I don't even have 20 minutes. I'm lying. <laughs> um, so Listen, if you are looking for ways to support the show, consider hitting the like or thumbs up button, or you can send a cash app right here on the screen. Make sure you proofread dollar sign T-H-A, not dollar sign T-H-E. 
like my screen name, just make sure you proofread. And I appreciate that, but it is so not required. You can support the stream by just hitting thumbs up, sharing this video via text message, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, your group chats, however it is that you share videos, and most importantly, subscribing, okay? You don't have to spend any money to support me over here, but I appreciate any and all support that comes my way. Now, let's talk about Shanquella Robinson and get into this skit update, okay? There was this really janky, rushed, not well put together skit that was done on and about Shanquella Robinson. Um, I didn't appreciate it. It was done in extremely poor taste. Okay. Um, if you have not seen it already, uh, brace yourselves. I want to give you a trigger warning. Okay. Let me just refresh your memory. Justice is a blind goddess. I'm trying to figure out what's taking you bitches so long to get naked. <laughs> and who's trying to go skinny dipping with me? Ain't no skinny dipping, bitch. Oh, so I want to find out that you was fucking my nigga, all them nigga and the least nigga. Bitch, you think you better than me? Bitch, 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 bitch. Because I've been quiet. Y'all too loud. So what the hell is y'all playing? We don't fuck with that bitch. Simple as that. Look, that's between y'all. I only came for the free trip, so. Okay. Yeah. Shit, man. fuck this bitch at this point. Yeah, y'all wildin', but I get it. Mm. Y'all been playing this shit for weeks, ain't you? Mm -hmm. Months actually. Does Zeke know about it? And he on the way? Yeah. Shit, ain't nobody tell her to pay five thousand dollars for us for no trip. Exactly, dumbass. This is a dumbass bitch. Hell, always showing off. I hate that bitch, bro. Dog, would y'all just shut the fuck up and stick to the plan? And everything would be good, all right? I hear her coming. Let me first say, I have a daughter. Hey, roll us on your wrist of plain giant. Deplorable doesn't even begin to describe what this... I call it a skit. It's supposed to be some episode of some series. It's so bad that you could find an Instagram comedian with only an iPhone to do a better job than what the hell Tubi did, right? Deplorable. I did a whole video on it. It was my very last live stream. So if you need to get caught up and you need the full breakdown, definitely do that. I don't have time to get into that, but I want to let you know about the updates and what's going on with this story right now. Number one, I'm not even going to tell you what platform this is because I don't want to give them any clout and I'm not going to name their name. But the nerve of this post, somebody sent this to me and it said the internet is loving the Tubi series Street Legal loosely based off of the Shanquilla Robinson story. Who's loving this? Who loving it? Who? Who? Deplorable people. That's who. It is a mess. Now, here's the thing about it. I get that they wanted some shock value and some quick stuff. Like I said, there were typos and errors. They called her a he at the end of the thing. It was clearly rushed. They depict them all getting arrested at the end. They even had depicted Nazir Wiggins as a white man. White man. It was ridiculous. I get that they're looking for shock value and all of that other stuff, but had they taken their time and stuck to the facts, the production would have been just as disheartening and shock worthy. It would have been just as disheartening and shock worthy if they would have stuck to the facts because the actual facts are just as disgusting as whatever this little cheap, nasty, poorly casted, tasteless skit is. It's ridiculous, but they didn't want to do that. They wanted to rush and do something. I don't know how you get worse than Tyler Perry in a production, but they successfully pulled it off, okay? Why muddle? Why muddle the facts and, and, and fill in the blanks that even local law enforcement aren't privy to? Media has a lot of control. And there are some people who are going to watch this and think, oh, well, this is what happened. They depicted Shanquella as a slut, as a hoe, as a pass around. And again, where's the proof to substantiate any of that? I watched that entire episode and it was trash. I wouldn't recommend you watch it, right? Because we don't want to support him. But 
profiting off of black women's pain is a nasty trend. Y'all know I was talking about that with the Funky Deneva thing a while ago. However, however, there is a petition. There is a petition. So let's get into this petition. Okay. We take a look at this petition. Please help remove the despicable film from Tubi. So you are able, and I did link that in the description box. And you know what? What I will do, I'll put it in the chat. Oh, that's a long link, but it'll work. It's not the shortened link. Oh, it won't work. Okay. I'll, I'll have, I, I've will i linked it in the description box already. That link is too long for me to press send on it on the thing. Um, however, this petition did numbers. Do you hear me? 40, 45,000 people have signed this petition to remove this despicable film from Tubi. So I suggest that you all check out this film. I was really surprised because what this film did, what this petition did, was it actually it picked up on my tweet and my video so you see it it mentions me it mentions my video and there's a, a tweet that I did that went kind of viral as well. And so they mentioned my stuff because I was really the first person to, to, to speak out about this on Saturday between 12 and 1 when I um, spoke about it. So let's move on over to the Bossip website. Tactless and tasteless to be series serve cease and desist letter for unauthorized depiction of Shanquella Robinson. So you can see they are covering this. Bossip doesn't like it. They don't agree with it. That is their, you know, their perception of it. And everyone has a different one. I've gotten some comments on that video that says something like, I'm not boycotting Tubi or not watching Tubi because of your opinion. You goofy, da, da, da. You can call me goofy all day. And these was the, most of that type of sh was coming from men. And I'm like, if it was your sister and your sister died that way and Tubi made a mockery of your sister's untimely passing and attack and murder like that, you would not be satisfied and there would be no laughing emojis here. And that's the problem. But nonetheless, we're here in this boss of our article. Um, and, uh, and again, I posted this tweet that a lot of people were retweeting. Um, this person retweeted my tweet and said, shout out to Shanquella Robinson, her family, most likely. Um... I hope that she sues them. This is disgusting. And you can see my tweets are here. And I said, Shanquella Robinson's story has been exploited on Tubi. And it's a disrespectful disgrace. Look at how they did their story and got no permission from the family. The family also refutes Tubi's portrayal of Shanquella for the following reasons. And it, it, it's, a, it's a little bit of a long tweet, but not really. But I don't have time to get into all of that right now. Uh, we continue going down on the article. And someone else said, wow. And I said, and you can, they, they've linked all of this in the Bossip article. So shout out to me for bringing awareness to Shanquella. Um, and I said, right. My first thought was, am I being dramatic? Because I was immediately outraged when watching this nonsense. Another person tried to do this comparison thing to deflect and derail the conversation. So this person says, Surely you'd be okay if Law and Order did it first, right? Law and Order exploits stories all the time. And I'm like, I don't watch Law and Order, but people are forgetting that tact is a part of the ex it's a part of the equation here. This was low down. It was done with zero integrity and it was in poor taste. You could tell it was rushed. There was typos, horrible acting, ridiculous casting, etc. The list goes on and on. We shouldn't be able to do subpar things or lower the bar by saying, well, look at this white show or look at this other show. I don't I don't know. I don't watch Law and Order. So I don't know. I can't even begin to. What I can say about this coming from people of our own community is this was not OK. It just was not OK. And it lacked tact. It lacked compassion. It hasn't even been a year and it was tasteless and it was despicable. And it looked like a cheap, janky skit. It was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking. And it, it and it muddled the facts. There are some people who are like, I liked it and I, I watched it and it, it stuck to the fact. No, it didn't. So this is about to change how people look at, at Shanquilla. Oh, she was sleeping with everybody's boyfriend. And again, where are the facts to really 
paint her out to be this promiscuous slut that was sleeping with all of her friends' man. Where are the facts for that? There are no facts for that. This was insensitive at best, at best. And I wanted to let y'all know that there is a petition and I do recommend that y'all check out Danny Robertson's video that she did on it as well. If you wanna watch it, because you want the full context, because I did so that I could report on it without taking a, a 40 second clip from social media, I would highly recommend checking out Danny Robertson's video on it because she watches it. And of course, over there, you'll be watching it without giving to be their, their due diligence, right? Without giving to be a click on a view. But Danny is breaking it down every 60 seconds. She's hitting pause to let you know what's right and what's wrong and how they got her narrative so wrong and so jumbled and so screwed up. And so screwed up. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, I'm going to search for her um, video and I'm going to put it in the, in the chat so that you all can watch this. Um, you can watch Danny Robertson's breakdown as opposed to going and giving, uh, what's his face to be a click or a view. Okay, here we go. Watch Danny's video here. Okay, so that's Danny's video. I do, I'm gonna share it out on the community tab a little bit later today when I get to work. Um, but yeah, th this whole Shan the, the Shanquilla Robinson thing, it was really extremely, it, it was disgusting. And there's a handful of people making excuses. Law and order does it too. I can't speak for law and order. I can't even make any arguments for that. What I can say is whatever they do might be a more. How is it that Jeffrey Dahmer and his story was handled with more care to get to be accurate, to stick to the facts, to pick up on the cadence and the nuances within the stories and the things. And he was the predator. He was the aggressor. Shanquel is the victim here. So it, it, it's not making sense how insensitive to be treated and, and, and what they did to her. And this is coming from a director who is black, okay? A, a, a black director. To be is owned by Fox. But get into that whole breakdown if you haven't already. I did it on the channel. I would love to go into it more right now, but I have to actually go and get to work. I had to leave like right now. I should have left five minutes ago. I love you all so much. Y'all say beautiful, black, and blessed. I did have a sticky note for y'all, but you know what? We'll get into the sticky note when I get off of work a bit later today. Shout out to everybody who did send um, or support the channel in a monetary way. Um, Joy Joy's World, thank you for the $5 um, super sticker. I do appreciate that. Um, shout out to Relly You for renewing your membership. Shout out to Onika and shout out to AMK as well. Yes, I got to go. I am going to be late for work at this point. I love y'all so much. Let me know how y'all enjoyed the morning show. Y'all know I don't do this often. I just decided to try something new. Y'all stay beautiful, black, and blessed. And I'm going to catch y'all in the next video. Deuces. But that's it. If you want to catch more of my commentary on black culture or vital and trending information, be sure to subscribe by hitting that little circle in the middle of the screen. Or I'll catch. And please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Y'all on your way out. Y'all might be rewinding to catch it from the beginning, but please hit the thumbs up button. The like button means so, 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 so much. And drop some pancakes in the chat. Bye. Roll us on your wrist or plain but that's it. If you want to catch more of my commentary on black culture or vital and trending information, be sure to subscribe by hitting that little circle in the middle of the screen. Or I'll catch you in one of these rectangles to the right in another video. I'll see you there.